morning, beloved. Welcome to Ministries of Love and Hope. Welcome to those who are here in the sanctuary. Welcome to those who are watching out on Facebook Live. This is today that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. We yes. thank the Lord God today that he has thank allowed you. us to be here amongst the yes, land of the Lord. living one more time because we know yes, that we have lost someone. We know that yes, someone Lord. did not make it today. So we need to give God praise and glory yes. that we have breath in our body. Yes. We need to give God praise and glory that we are still here for such a time as this. Yes, Even though it may be a little hard, yes. we need to do like David did. We need to encourage ourselves, beloved, yes. and give God praise and glory. Yes. I thank yes. the Lord God today that he woke me up this morning. Yes, I thank the Lord God today that he started me on my way. Yes, I Lord. thank the Lord God today that I have breath in my body yes. and I have movement in my bones because yes, we know somebody out there will not have breath in their body and yes. somebody out there will not have movement in their body. So yes, I bless the Lord God today because the Lord God said enter into his courts with thanksgiving yes, and enter into his courts with praise. Yes, so Lord God, I invoke your presence today, Lord God, and yes, your praise is in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, I give you praise, the Lord and honor, because you alone are worthy, Father. Father God, those who are watching right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you will meet them right now, like that you pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, those who need a healing touch, Lord God, you are the Lord God that healeth thee. Lord God, those who need strength, Lord God, you are our strength, Father. And Father God, your word says that those that wait upon the Lord, you shall renew their strength. They shall honor with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and they shall not faint. I thank you for strength, Lord God, because I know, Lord God, myself, Father, I was moving slow this morning, Lord God. I didn't know what I was going to do, Lord God, but I thank you, Lord God, that you put strength in my body, Lord God, that you put strength in my bones, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the blood that is flowing through my body in the name of Jesus, Lord God, the blood of healing, Lord God, the blood of being set free, Father, in the name of Jesus. So, God, I pray, Father, as we enter in today, Lord God, and as the speaker comes, Lord God, to speak your word, Lord God, that our chains will be broken, Lord God, that people will be set free, Father, that that they will be set free in their mind, Lord God, and in their hearts, Father, in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord God, we know there's trials and tribulations that are going on right now, but we know, Lord God, that we have a Father that is in Christ Jesus. We know that we have an advocate with the Father that is going before us, Lord God. So I thank the Lord God for the advocate who is Christ Jesus, Lord God. So Father, have your way today in the name of Jesus. And all these things we say thank you and amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Father God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. 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 Thank you, have your way, Lord God. I yield myself to you, Lord Jesus. We yield ourselves to you, Father God. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Yeah, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, for this sweet, sweet spirit. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us to be here another day. Thank you, Father God, for having us to understand that it is not by might, strength, by smarts. It is only by the grace of God that we are still here. You blessed us, Father God, by clothing us in our right mind. You blessed us, Father God, with the function of our limbs. You blessed us, Father God, with the gift of eyesight and the gift 
of hearing. We, we thank you, Father God, because you blessed us with friends and family. Lord God, I pray that you be glorified in all that we say and that we do from this day forward. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. 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 I gotta wipe my, my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Ah. Hallelujah. I recall. This is not part of the message, but Ishibari, the Lord said, Ishibara. The Lord said, share this. This happened, wow, a long time ago. I was praying with Eric, this is the oldest brother, on the phone. And we, I was in a basement, and she was upstairs, I believe. In the bedroom somewhere. You see about that. And <laughs> Eric and I were praying. Oh, we were, wow, we were hitting the throne. Hitting the throne. Hitting the throne of God. And I, I don't know why, but I went upstairs in the kitchen. And Lisa came down. You see about that. And when I got into the kitchen, you see about that. Let me say, when God says that the rocks will cry out, let me tell you, my body, it wasn't me, it wasn't any mental, I didn't, my body went down because the presence of God was there. My voice, I had no control. It said, bow down, bow down. You see, but I... So, when the scripture says that every knee shall bow and every tongue yeah. shall confess, yeah. it won't be from here because the very molecules in your body, no, the very molecules in the body that God gave you, you see my body, the very atoms in those molecules that belong to God will obey God. In the presence of God, the very molecules in this body took over. I gave it no thought. I had no idea what was going to come. I did not, I couldn't get up if I wanted to. And my face was to the floor. So you better believe it. No, you don't have to believe. It. No, it doesn't matter if you believe or not. Because God is still God. And he will be God. Long after you're no longer here. Because I had, I had that question a long time ago. Okay, if you're not going to go against somebody's will, you're not, you're not going to make them praise you. He didn't. But the molecule. That he Amen. created it. Amen. We obey his word. He see by Woo! And that's what happened. I don't know why the Lord said ah, to say that, but I feel better. I don't know about y'all. He see by Just Just knowing. See, see, what we need to be, and this is not part of the message, but what we need to be aware of. Those that call themselves the sons and daughters of God. That there is a deadly battle going on in the spirit. Because if God had, if God decided to pull back his protection, you best believe this building will come crumpling down on each and every one of us. But we don't give thought to that because we can't see in the spiritual realm. We, as a people, I say people, all of us, as Americans particularly, we're more interested in the carnal, the physical things of protection, like the guns. But a bullet can't stop the devil. The bullet cannot stop the demon. 
can stop a person. But it can't stop your car from exploding. If God says, you know what? That will have your way. You saw what happened to Job. Now it's with God's protection. So just imagine for a minute. No, just think about it for a minute. What happens in the spiritual realm? You know his desire to kill, steal, and destroy. And then God says, you know what? I have had enough with mankind again. Everything was blew up there. I can't even imagine. We need to be more aware. We, the people of God, need to be more aware. That's not my message. Here's my message. The title is and this is going to be short. I got to finish. Healthy, healthy and holy habits. And God, I'll give you some background on that before I give you the scripture. But, but God mentioned this to me last summer. When I was riding my bike and I told him I was so frustrated because I couldn't ride like the people without diabetes. I had to, I had to stop and check my sugar and, and get some grape juice, get some candy. My sugar, I would leave, and, and I know it's counterintuitive, I would jack up my sugar to 300 just so I could go riding, which you don't want to do. Because the thing is with diabetes, if your sugar is too high, you damage your eyes, your liver, your kidneys, your arteries, your nerves. If your sugar is too low, you damage your brain. So I jacked it up, only to get from 300 to get it down to 60. So I'm damaging everything. But by the grace of God. I saw I get frustrated. I would tell them, listen, okay, it's 290 now, honey. I would literally, literally sweep a portion of my driveway. It'd drop to 120. I'm like, God, I know I'm healed. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. You heard my testimony. You heard me declare before the doctors, before people who don't even believe, believe in you. You heard me confess this when I'm by myself. You heard me confess this when I see the blood sugar skyrocket or plummet. You heard me confess this. There's no doubt in my mind. But I got frustrated. I said, I want to be able to ride 50 miles nonstop. I want to be able to do that like everyone else. So I got frustrated. But then God said, and, and oh, so what, what would happen at nighttime, and Melissa can tell you, my sugar would just drop. It doesn't, it could be 300 when I go to bed. I knew, and I kept, I keep candy at the head of my bed. I knew it was going to drop. Anyway, even if I didn't go bike riding, even if I didn't go to the gym, it would just drop. Sometimes to the point where I was confused. And I, I knew where I, I, I knew I was in this place before. But I forgot what to do. Each and every time, I would forget what to do. Now I had to either sit on the edge of the bed or just stand there, trying to gather myself. So I know I need to do something. But what is it? And by the grace of God, it'll come to me. Sometimes, sometimes I don't walk right past the candy. I don't know why, and try to go downstairs. I don't know how I never drank to the point of being drunk. But good Lord, trying to get down those slippery, hardwood floor stairs. I don't know why, but I thought that was the right thing to do. But that added to the frustration. So I'll talk to my doctor, my primary doctor. She said, I'm going to send you to a specialist. So the specialist called, and we played phone with him. I said, God, I'm tired of this. Then God told me what to do. He said, okay, Jay, take two units of the long-acting insulin from your dosage. Okay. I did that. I was 
able to run without my sugar dropping like it used to. I was able to go to bed without my sugar dropping like it used to. It dropped so much, I, I was getting cavities. Because at 2 in the morning, I'm eating cavities. I don't feel like getting up to brush my teeth. 1 in the morning, 3, I didn't feel like getting up to brush my teeth. Even a dentist said, Chad, you got to see a doctor about your sugar drop. So after, after, God said, okay, reduce it by two units. I said, okay, okay, I was doing it. I was happy. I said, okay, God, I want to reduce it some more. God said, what you need to establish is healthy and holy habits. Healthy and holy habits. Now I'm going to read First Timothy 4 8. And this is the uh, you know, the good news by this. Is, again, this is what my favorite. It's called today's English version or the Good News Bible. So it's a bit different than King James. But it says, physical exercise has some value, but spiritual exercise is viable in every way because it promises life both for the present and for the future. I'm going to read that again. Physical exercise has some value, but spiritual exercise is viable in every way because it promises life both for the present and for the future. So what God said, God said, Chad, what you need to do in order for me to tell you to drop it by two more units, you need to be consistent with your bike riding and going to the gym. Now, a long time ago, I mean, I, and you know my story, I started working out because I was getting bullied. And I figured, if I bulk up, this is elementary school, they would leave me alone. But the issue wasn't my physical body, it was, I was a punk, I'm gonna say the word, I was scared. I didn't want to fight, didn't like fighting, didn't want anything to do with it, so I ran. That was my solution, was to run. I was very fast. That was my solution. So, after doing something for so long, for me, it became, it wasn't, it was beyond a habit. It was like breathing for me. It wasn't a matter of if Chad was going to the gym, but a matter of when. Because you knew I would. It was just a matter of when I was going. So now, there was a study done on establishing habits. Because at first, I thought that it took 30 days to form a habit. But this scientist, Felipe Lally, and she is a health psychology researcher at University College London. And in her study, she found out, on average, it takes more than two months before a new behavior becomes automatic. So for me, it was working out was automatic. I didn't think about it. It wasn't. Again, it was like walking and talking and, and, and breathing for me. It was automatic. Whereas a habit is, a habit is something that you still have to think about. So for instance, you have to, when you make tea, you gotta think about making tea. Look at the certain, if you make the tea the, certain, the same time every day, that's a, that's, that can become a habit. But some people become addicted tea and coffee because of caffeine. That's a bad habit. You don't want that. Okay, healthy habits. So God said, Chad, become consistent because I have stopped being consistent with working out when Melissa got sick. And it does not take long to break a habit. It takes longer to break a bad habit than a good habit. Because it didn't take long for me to stop having the desire to work out. It doesn't take long to stop praying at a certain time of the day. God gave me a certain time of the day to pray. Oh, five o'clock, five o'clock. Sorry, I'm gonna try. I'm sorry. Five o'clock in the morning, he said, pray. Because he said, I want your first fruits, Chad. I don't want your left. I don't want your time after you went to the gym, after you went to work out. Nope, 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 no. I don't want your leftovers, is what he said. 
So establishing that healthy habit of prayer, not just prayer, but again, at a specific time when you agree to meet God. Because, of course, we were told, you got to pray without ceasing. Yes, that is correct. But in your quiet time, where it's just you and God, he desires it. That is a good spiritual habit to have. Now also, going back to healthy physical habits. You know, at one point in our lives, if you're old enough, you've been sick before. You had something that hurt before. But what we need to realize is that all ailments are not a test from God. Some of them are self inflicted. Some of us have high blood pressure, not because of hereditary issues, not because we're being tested by God, but because of our lifestyle, because of what we eat or don't eat, because we're not active in it. Now, why is that important? Why is that important? Well, because we were bought with a price. This body does not belong to me. Imagine someone using your car, driving your car, doing whatever they want with your car without your permission. Meaning your car requires premium gas and they put regular gas. You clean your car every other day. This person is not doing that. You rotate your tires. You change the oil because it's your car. But someone who is using your car is not doing that. And we all would agree, that is wrong. Well, that's what we're doing. When I don't eat the way God says to eat, when I don't eat what God says to eat, I'm wrong because this is his body. When I decide that I know more about keeping this physical body healthy than God, I'm wrong. So what do we do? We ask God. And God already said, listen, we all know to eat more raw fruits and vegetables. We've all been told, get up and walk. I don't. I sit at my desk hours at a time. And you know, even now I'm stiff. Right here, my hips, they hurt. And God said, Chad, he didn't laugh, but Chad, God said, Chad, that's self. That's because of you. Not because of me. Not because of the enemy. That's because of you. You decide. And the thing is, Chad, he said, the thing is, Chad, you know better because you know how and what to do. You know how to lose weight. You know how to build muscle. You know how to build cardio. You know all of that. So it is on you, Chad. For those that don't know, okay. But Chad, listen to what God says to me. Chad, I gave you a lot of knowledge over those years. And the reason, he said, I gave you that knowledge is because... You have diabetes. And to back it up, God said, and I asked him, as I told y'all before, why? Why me, Lord? This is that, you know, when I was still young, were younger. Why, why me, Lord? The knee was hurt, man. You gotta prick your fingers every, I mean, six, seven times a day. When I'm in the gym, I prick it like six times a day in addition to when I'm not in the gym. So the, why me? Why, 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 why me, Lord? I, what did I do? And as I told y'all, he said, so that I be glorified. Because he said, I knew I could trust you. I could depend on you telling the whole world that I'm not a doctor. I am the healer. Because as we know, we said first the definition of medicine is called the art, not the science, the art of healing. So 
physician is a practitioner of the art of healing. God doesn't have to practice anything. So God said, chant. It's simple. The instructions are simple. The deed is simple. Put one foot in front of the other. Then God said, also chant. Spiritual habits. Bad spiritual habits. Also known as tradition. I recall being in Catholic school. And I forgot what they even call it, but I think Apostles Creed or something like that. But every time, I didn't even think about the words. I said it because the principal said to say it. It didn't mean anything to me, but you were told. It was a tradition. You say this, and then the Hail Mary. Based on, on the sin you committed, it was nine Hail Marys, five, four, whatever. Vain repetition. And I don't mean to offend any person who's a Catholic, but say it to a dead person. Because Mary had to go before Christ as well. She had her sin forgiven. And also we all heard that Mary's a mother of God. So God created the earth before Mary was here. So that doesn't make sense to me. Again, no offense. But tradition, you have to be aware of traditions. And I'll give you an example. This is a physical example. Because again, traditions, some traditions are good. The tradition that we had as a people was if you live in my house, you would go to church. That one paid off for me. Because at first for me, it was vain repetition. I didn't want to be kicked out. That was the only reason why I went to church. Didn't want to be kicked out. But I recall, I remember the day, first Sunday in January, 1990. I was preaching, I was preaching. And my God, I don't know why. The devil, the enemy, it just had it that the, the pitch, his pitch was just irritating the mess out of my ear. It, it hurt my ears. I said, okay, no, I'm leaving. And as soon as I said that, the preacher stopped. It was a big old, it was a big church, so it wasn't like you heard me. And he called, you know, people out if you want to say. And I remember being in line. Which was the first time. I had done that before. I don't know why I did it then. I started negotiating with God. Because I thought that's what you did. That's what I was taught in the Catholic Church. You negotiate. You tell, you confess your sins. One to another. Or to the priest. Or whoever. So I was in line. You know, I give up this. I give up that. Tradition. I didn't know what it meant. But it was, God wasn't looking at that. He was looking at my intent. He knew I was sincere. I just didn't know what I was doing. Because in my spiritual habits that I was developing, I had no instruction. That's, not, that's very key. You need instruction. So I said, okay, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Blah, 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 blah. And it was sincere because when I went to the front, I felt the difference. I felt cleansed. I felt a burden lifted from my shoulders. Mm. Mm. And as you see me do now here, I did that. Again, this is, I didn't know anybody other than my mom. But I was shouting. Mm. And I remember my uncle was there as well. And I recall. He gave the microphone to people who just gave it loud. I snatched the microphone from his hand, Uncle Roy. Ha! That's where, all, that's where it all started. It was the desire. So that vain repetition, thank God, it became productive. Also, the tradition of worshiping false gods. And don't think, false gods could be Zeus, Apollo, but it also could be money. It could be yourself, your job, your children, your 
husband, your wife. It can be anything that you put higher than God. That's a false God. But what we tend to do, and because we're human, even the humans that are spiritual, look at John the Baptist. When he was in jail. If that be Jesus, dude. I mean, I'm not judging him. Of course not. But when he was in a womb, when Mary came over to see her cousin Elizabeth, he looked. Got filled with the Holy Spirit in the belly. But yet, even him, when the circumstances got rough and tough, had a little bit of doubt. But even then, Christ didn't condemn him. He didn't say, oh, he should know better. He should know why. No, no, no. He didn't go and tell him. He said, but I, the instruction. Because if you say, Chad, you know, if, if somebody would have said back when I was getting bullied, I, the thing is, I didn't tell anybody. And I thank God I didn't. I didn't, I didn't tell my brothers or my sister. My, again, my sister would have hurt somebody. I didn't tell my, my mother. Or I, didn't, I didn't tell anybody. I kept, I kept it to myself. I didn't tell my friends. I mean, they saw I was being bullied. I didn't tell the teachers. I didn't, I didn't report it to anybody. So I had no instruction because I, I, I didn't know to get instruction. So I endured that. But Again, instruction. The late Martin Luther King, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, mentioned three. I'd love for you to read this. I mean, it's been a while, you'll see it. Three false gods of modern man. I won't read what he said. I'll read you. He said, the false god of science. And okay, you can find this on the internet. Uh, this is a good one. The false god of nationalism. My country right or wrong. And he also said, the false god of money. The reason that that happened. Is because in our forming of habits, be they spiritual or physical, we do them without talking to God. When I go to the gym, I don't know what I'm doing. I ask God because God created my body. He knows what works. God knows what foods to eat, if you have diabetes, if you have hypertension, high blood pressure, if you have a blocked colon. God told me years ago that he put a natural remedy for every affliction on the earth. And that's proven because there's a Harvard-trained medical doctor. He was on public television years ago. And he said in this interview, I don't know the company's name, but the company that makes Lipitor, the low your cholesterol, which the side effect is damaging your liver. He said there's a plant that's illegal to bring here that is more effective with no negative side effects. And the reason why it's not here, listen to this. Because the company that makes Lipitor, get it, now pay attention, sued nature or sued God and said God infringed on their patent. And our U.S. court system agreed that this company infringed on the plan that God made however long ago. So there's a plant. With no 
ill side effects. It's more effective than Lipitor to lower your cholesterol. But we can't get it here because this is a man. If we allow God to direct us and guide us in forming our habits, spiritual habits, our spirit man, and I say, I don't mean male or female, our spirit man will be oh so much stronger. If we allow God to help us form our physical habits. Our bodies are not hurt as much. Of course, there are some things you just can't avoid. You're, there are curses, hereditary curses. We do realize that. But God is still God. He can, in the curse, in you, and the thing is, that, and people say, well, how come God has not healed me? Because listen, listen, listen. You have to be willing to do what God says. Okay, all right, God says, okay. If I heal you from diabetes, be it type 1 or type 2, I know that you will act a fool. You will have donuts for breakfast. You will eat pasta for lunch, and you eat pasta and cake for dinner. And you know what? I said that. I said, I said, God, I said, God, I wish, man, I'll tell you, I said, I would have glazed donuts for breakfast. Because as, as a human, I want what I can't have right now. And that's human nature. Because I can't, I, I don't know how that feels to be able to eat something like that and not be concerned about my sugar. I don't know how it feels to not have my sugar drop if I miss a meal. I, I had no concept of that. It's been so long. Since 1973, I was 40 years I had no concept. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But God is talking to everyone. Talk to God. He said, ask me. Ask me. I created your body. Ask me what food you should eat. Because yeah, I can heal. Well, yeah, I have healed you. But the healing won't manifest itself until you understand that your body does not belong to you. It belongs to me. And if it belongs to me, then you should ask me what to do to take care of my body. And I walk with the price. Don't forget, I gave my only begotten son to be able to call you my own. Ask me. Because what's going to happen when I heal you, my demon will be able to cast out. Scripture says that demons go to these black places, country, 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 and decide, oh, I'm going to go back with seven years worse than him. Which is a result of us not asking God. If you don't know how to pray, I tell you, the Lord's prayer start from there. But be mindful. Don't let that become vain repetition. Just don't memorize it. Think about each and every word. Think about each and every word. Meditate. Don't just say it. Just so you can go to bed. No. No. Study. Not just because you've been told. Study. Because the more you know of me, the more you know I can do for you. 
And what would I ask you to do for me or for my food? Don't make it vain. Because we all heard the scripture. We've seen it. We've seen it. They have the form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. We've all been in churches like that. We've all heard deacons or somebody pray every Sunday for the exact same prayer. But be mindful. Don't do what I do. As I recall, there was one deacon. Oh, he could pray. He was from down south. I remember that. Boy, he, he could pray. But after a while, I was still younger than the Lord. But after a while, I think what? I just say the same thing every time. But God said, He means what He says. It's not vain repetition. It may sound like it to you, but they're not deep. He's not praying to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One more thing. One more thing. When you have healthy spiritual habits, like 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, This is again the Good News Bible. Be joyful always. Pray at all times. Be thankful in all circumstances. This is what God wants for you in your life in union with Christ Jesus. That's not easy. That, that takes work. So, so, so God, you, you're telling me that you, you're, you're telling me that when, when I lose my job, to be to, to, to have joy and to be thankful. When I get a call from my family saying mom's in the hospital, you're saying to have joy and be thankful. You're saying that when I lose a loved one, be thankful and to pray without ceasing. God, I don't feel it. But that's why it's important to establish these healthy and holy habits. Maybe habits is not a good word for holy. I won't say routine. That sounds rote, you know? But let it become part of your spirit. Do it to the point where you don't have to think about it. You do it without hesitation. Just know, just know, just know that you're going to do it. No matter what comes. Do it only for the glory of God. So that when people see you giving thanksgiving to God while you're in the hospital visiting a loved one, just know that that very act could encourage someone else who's on their deathbed and say, you know what? If that person right there is praising God, what do I have to lose? And that could be the trigger for that person on your deathbed to get up and walk like Lazarus. Because the thing is, listen, listen, listen to this. If Lazarus did not recognize Jesus' voice, he would not have gotten up. Guess what? God said, she. We hear voices all the time. 
We don't respond to it. Destruction. Destruction. Last thing. Not the last thing. And this is difficult for me. I have I, James 1, 19. Again, renew the Bible. It says, remember this, my dear friends. <laughs> Everyone must be quick to listen, but slow to speak. And slow to become angry. Now we know God says we can be angry and sin. Woo! For me, that's my struggle. I, I admit, y'all should know by now. Because I confess almost everything. Because I want it, I want it out there. I don't want y'all to be surprised. If you hear somebody say, well, change your child to anger. It's not like it used to be, duh. I told y'all. That's, that's, that is very important because what happened to this, what I was doing, I wasn't judging. I was assuming this is different. I was forming my own narrative for you. So, but oh, this is taking, this is a perfect example, well, for me, an example, a natural. I get working out a long time ago. There was one guy. In the gym, he had he had always wore shorts, but his his legs are all scarred up and, and messed up, and one was bigger than the other. And I said, "Oh, in my mind, oh, he must be on drugs. He must be on drugs." And God had someone to tell me, "You know, he's doing very well with this chemo treatment." Hmm. Chemo treatment, not, well, not drugs. I learned to what he was a drug addict. God's narrative was no. No. He had cancer. Taking chemo. That's another habit. Soon. Which I do quite a bit. And I know I'm not the only one that does. It's easy, it's convenient. Make somebody's story fit your story. That's a bad habit. Bad holy habit. But you look at Jesus at the well with the woman who had several husbands. Uh, he didn't raise his voice. He didn't call her any name. You can think of a lot of names he called her. No. to condemn did not. I will not condemn you. Go and sin no more. Healthy holy habits. This is because when you establish healthy holy habits, they're not just Things that I don't 
first name of the war was the guy who used to put all the food in Tom's food. Not as much as they used to. Because as we all know, it's not what they see, it's not what they I mean, it's not what they hear, it's what they see. They saw Christ again. They read about Christ again. They see the love of God in everybody. Every day. Healthy, holy habits. Not just for you, but for me. But for the body of Christ. Live for the ones that do not know Christ as their Lord and Savior. What we need to understand, and I'll close with this, is that in the kingdom of God, in any kingdom, there's only one king that God says, I'm the king of kings and the Lord of lords. In a kingdom, every citizen belongs to the king. You're not subject to the king. There's no debate when the king tells you to do something or the king says to stop. There's no debate. There's no parliament. There's no parliament. The king, the, the king declares his law. And when God said this to me, it became law. And when I don't do it, it's a sin. God said, Jack established healthy and holy habits. God is saying the same thing to you. You told me this again last summer. There's still habits I need to establish. There's still habits I need to break. So I urge you, everyone here, and everyone under the sound of my voice, look in the mirror. The physical mirror first. If you're happy with what you see, but not healthy, change it. If you look in the mirror and you're not healthy, but you're happy, change it. Keep it. Because you are made in God's image. And God is image. Spiritually, when you look in the mirror, If you're not healthy, change it. God's mercy is allowing each and every one of us to change it while we have a chance. So I urge each and every one of you and me to do it expeditiously. Not for God's sake, but for your sake and for your neighbor's sake and your loved one's sake. In the name of Christ Jesus. I pray, Father God, that the word you gave me will saturate the spirit of all those who are listening and will listen. I pray, Father God, that your word will set people free like it set me free. Pray, Father God, that your word will give people hope like you gave me hope, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father God, that we will seek your face continually in all things. I pray, Father God, that those who think they know will just take the time to ask you. I pray, Father God, that they will seek sound counsel and I pray Father God that they will take the sound counsel and make it a part of their daily lives. I pray Father God that we will pray more, read more, meditate more, sincerely in the name of Christ Jesus. I pray Father God that again, 
response of all that we say, that we do. In the name of Christ Jesus. And I do urge anyone under the sound of my voice, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you would come to him just as you are. Come to him with a cigarette in your mouth, the bottle in your hand, the needle in your arm. Come to him just as you are. And ask God to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to come into your life in the name of Christ Jesus. Because it will be better. All these things we ask in the name of the Most High God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bid you peace. I love all of you. Whether you believe it or not. I hug you if I could. I miss you. And I pray that we will see each other again in the flesh. Amen.